Okay, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started uh, now. It's a uh, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you, you might be. Uh, I hope you uh, are very interested in Azure IoT Hub today. I am going to be doing a presentation on that, looking at the various components of it, and then kind of giving you an overview of that. I'm Blaze Stewart. I'm an architect at OneElect and also a Microsoft MVT, uh, sorry, MVP, Microsoft Certified Trainer, Partner Cloud Solution Architect and MCSC on Azure. And uh, I'm all, also online with the One Mule if you want to follow me on Twitter. Just before we dive into the content, we want to talk a little bit about Wintelect. We are a consulting and training company. Uh, our core, our core uh, lines of business are consulting, which is uh, where we go into your projects and we work with you to build things and to put things online, or we can take entire projects on ourselves and build things as well. We also have uh, two training lines of business. One is uh, Instructor led instructor led training. It's either uh, through virtual means or we go on site to your uh, to your place of business and uh, tr train up your developers on various technologies. And then we do on demand training with one like now, which is our uh, video subscription based uh, training site that we have a world class content from some of the best in the industry to, you know, with all kinds of things related to software development and technology, particularly related to Microsoft technology and Azure. Um, you probably might have heard some of, uh, about some of our, our authors that we've been uh, well published and we've done a number of books from uh, several of the co-founders, including Jeff Procise, Jeff, uh, John Robbins and Jeffrey Richter. And uh, there's about 30 books out there. Some of the more uh, popular ones are Jeffrey Richter's uh, CLR uh, in C Sharp or Jeff Procise's Windows MVC uh, book. And then John Robbins is a uh, legend for uh, debugging applications and so on. And also just a few other highlights from about our company. We are an Azure uh, Gold Partner as well as um, a DevOps Partner. We are a training partner, and we're we're also an AI partner as of as recently this year. We were awarded the IAMCP Gold Partner of the Year and the uh, Partner of the Year worldwide. We have multiple uh, Azure uh, multiple Azure MVPs and MVPs in general. Our our, our CEO is a Microsoft Regional Director. And we have lots of other types of connections with Microsoft. So we're tightly integrated with that, with Microsoft. And we have a lot of uh, uh, mind share in that, in that space. So we have a uh, close relationship with all of those folks. And, uh, and that helps us uh, help you with anything that you might have going on on Azure or in the, the programming uh, .NET and so on and that so forth. So for today's agenda, we're going to look at four different things related to Azure. We're going to be looking um, and Azure IoT in particular. We're going to be looking at Azure IoT Hub, looking at actual devices and how they connect up to Azure IoT Hub, the Azure IoT Gateway, and uh, or Azure IoT uh, Hub as they sometimes call it, and I mean Azure IoT Edge as they call it, and then the device provisioning service. And so we're going to hit these all in this order and talk about them at different levels of depth. I really want to focus in on the first two and uh, kind of mention the last two because these are also important, but uh, the first two are really kind of the bread and butter of what makes Azure IoT happen. So let's, let's do just a basic introduction to IoT. What is IoT? Uh, what is the Internet of Things, as it's called? It's simply a network of physical devices. Uh, think about anything that has an Internet connection can be connected, can be called an Internet of Things. Now, we're not talking about... Um, Things that are thing, these are typically things that are more autonomous rather than things like a phone or a laptop that are user oriented. These things are uh, sensors or automobiles or other things that have uh, things that are going on in the device that are being that are sending up telemetry to the internet, and that inter that telemetry is being captured by some system being analyzed. And there's also related to that uh, the ability to communicate back down from the internet to those devices. So the the nexus of all of these things that are connected to the internet is the Internet of Things, and we shorten that to be IoT. So um, it's basically to uh, reduce the human interaction with the devices and really focus on devices and talk about it from there. And if you think about it, you probably have a number of devices already, even in your home, that might have the IoT devices. If you can think about uh, maybe your HVAC system, or maybe you have a, a robot, a robot vacuum that's attached to the internet, or maybe you have um, something 
like a security system with all the sensors that you have on your uh, security system that are attached to the internet. All these things are IoT devices, and uh, these things are what produce the Internet of Things. So that's kind of the backdrop of what we're talking about today. And Azure IoT uh, uh, is the suite of tools and products and services that help shape the uh, Azure's offering for uh setting up an internet of things for your uh, environment, for your agency, your, uh, your organization. So IoT, Azure IoT Hub is the, the centralized management uh, of the, the things that are you're connecting to the internet. So it provides the management service. It, it brokers messaging uh, to devices and from devices uh, on the cloud. And there supports a number of different protocols, HTTP, AMQP, AMQP over WebSockets, MQTT, and MQTT over WebSockets. Now, these are uh, various uh, things that you can talk, that various protocols you can use. Now, I'm, we're going to be looking at a demo that uses MQTT in a moment, but basically the thing to understand here is to understand that it doesn't really matter what the protocol is, is that it's messaging, brokering messages. By messages, I'm talking about just things that are sent out on a wire that are received from a device. Either the device sends out something on the wire or the, the IoT hub sends out something on the wire and the device receives it. It's the broker for all of those uh, communications that go back and forth across the internet. And depending on the device, depends on how that uh, message will be interpreted and applied and vice versa. So with all that in mind, let's uh, look at some other slides related to this. Now, IoT has some other uh, features that are built into it, as well as uh, it offers device level security with SAS tokens or security uh, 501 certificates. Uh, you can also do, uh, a lot, there's various tiers available uh, on Azure IoT. You can get the free one. That's just for development. If you just want to play with it, you can do 8,000 messages per day, and you can go all the way up to 300 million messages per day on the uh, S3 tier. So it's highly scalable, and Azure IoT has a lot of the uh, the plumbing built in to make this scalable. And uh, as we look at the actual IoT hub and some demos, you'll see uh, how this uh, all works together. Uh, messages are received on the Azure IoT Hub. Can they can be routed to other things on Azure, like a message bus, and these can be picked up by things like logic apps and functions. Likewise, messages can be sent down from the cloud, and we'll uh, talk about that as well. Uh, IoT supports uh, sending files, and these get uploaded into blob storage, and uh, the settings can be stored and pushed to uh, uh, two devices by something called device twinning. Now, with all these features on the Azure IoT Hub, the, the ability to send files, messages, and uh, provision devices, and so on, and secure devices. There's a lot of things that we're, we're talking about here. It's one of those things that I think is best shown rather than uh, trying to explain it away. Um, so I'm going to pull up the Azure IoT Hub and just show you what it walk, do a walkthrough of Azure IoT Hub for you. And this is kind of the core product or the core uh, service that all the other things that we're going to be talking to, talking about that uh, connect to and use. So let me go pull this up right here and uh, pull this over here to my window. Now, um, with that in mind, here is uh, my Azure IoT Hub. I have uh, not not the free tier, but the uh, the standard S1 tier. This is up to 400,000 uh, messages a day. So this is the basic tier above the free one. And this is good for development as well as um, a, a small IoT uh, loads and so on, um, depending on the, the load that you have. Since I only, I'm only going to be using this for one device, uh, it makes sense to only have the smallest tier. Now, there's some features that aren't turned on in the free tier that are turned on this, this tier, which is one reason I wanted to use this tier instead of the free tier. So let's, uh, let's cruise through this. This is the dashboard, and it shows you uh, device twinning operations, device cloud messages. It gives you counts. Uh, over time. And this is where I was playing with it this morning just to make sure my demos were working. Um, and then you can get a, you can look at these dashboard metrics and so on and so forth. And what you have here on the dashboard, as you walk through this, the, basically the things that you want to look uh, for here are pricing and scale. Um, this is how you can scale up. So if you, like I said, there's several tiers you can look at. Um, you have the S1 tier, which is the one I'm using. The S3 tier is up to 300 million messages a day. And then, of course, they're a factor of 10. So you can get, you know, I'm paying 
uh, $25 a month for this standard tier. I use my MSDN account, so I'm not, you know, blowing that out the water. And that's two or that's three, obviously 20, 250 to two, 25, dollars a month. And these basic tiers aren't, aren't available. Um, as, um, depend downgrading to this is not allowed since I don't, I didn't enable the free tier. I'm using a standard tier. I would have to, uh, set this up to use the basic tier if I wanted to, uh, use this level, but this one's got more features, uh, that then the basic tier offers. So again, you can scale up and up and down between these two, these tiers. So if I'm using the two, S3, but I'm nowhere near that in my first uh, month of, of using that, as I realize that I need to scale back, okay, I can go back down to S to S2 or even down to S1, depending on the, the scale of these. So let's go back over. Let's look at some of the other um, things that we could, we're doing, we can look at here. Now, like I said, you can do certificates with uh, for security. You can add certificates. I'm not doing anything. You can add your root certificates and then you use those to uh, to secure devices uh, using X501 certificates for uh, secure communication and authentication uh, for those devices. And a few things that I also want to look at here is the, uh, the the messaging. Now, this is the kind of the bread and butter of the um, we're going to look at these in a moment i i2 edge and the device configuration um the messaging is where it allows you to upload files to azure iot hub and i've got this connected to an azure storage uh account a blob storage account that's called motion files i'm going to use this in, a de in another demo later on in this broadcast and it also gives you a number of endpoints that you can use to um uh to publish events and messages too. Now you come with a set, uh, some set of endpoints. Now these are what you actually program into uh, your devices to publish messages too. So you have endpoints and then you also have routes set up so that you can div d uh, route messages from, um, from certain um, endpoints to other things such as a, a, a message bus, which I'm gonna be using in another demo. So I can set up mass, uh, I can do, different routes and then the, these will be published out to uh, various things and so on um, depending on how I uh, establish those routes and configure those routes herein. So this one is configured to use a service bus queue here, this endpoint, um, and it's, um, you know, it allows me to take a message off of Azure IoT hub and then send it right over to service bus. And then I have uh, in uh, another later demo, I'm going to use a function to actually listen to that uh, service bus to pick that message up and actually act on it. So you can see here that I'm using a uh, service bus. I'm actually also using the file upload connected to a, uh, a storage account. And so with these, these types of things, I can publish and send messages to and from devices. I do want to look at device uh, IOT devices here. Uh, as well. I have one device on this particular Azure IoT uh, hub, and there's a couple things here that I want to look at. And then one of these is the device twin. As I mentioned in the slides, this is how you send settings down to the actual device. So I can change settings inside of this uh, JSON document, and then I can uh, save that. And what happens is it actually sends that back down to the device, and then that device then will receive those new settings. So this is one way of reading settings off the device and sending settings back down to the device from the cloud. And this is called a device twinning. Um, also related to devices is the ability to do messaging. So with a message, you can send a message down to the device and then send messages back from the device. In this case, uh, it can be whatever, it's just text data at that point. And uh, you can do key value properties on the message as well as the message body. And the message body can be, you know, JSON data, it can be, uh, you know, string data, whatever you want it to be, it doesn't really care. Um, and then you can uh, use the messaging messages to and from the device from the portal to uh, simulate uh, messages coming something uh, off of something like a service bus, if you don't want to have to wire everything up to the service bus. So this uh, portal gives you the ability to just interact with your devices directly. Uh, but you can do that through something like service bus. Now, also, there's something called direct methods. Now, this direct methods is a, is a feature that allows you to uh, set up message, um, uh, uh, apply message function calls 
uh, to a essentially a string value that you define here, and then you can pass in a payload that gets sent to a message uh, to a function that's defined on your your app. So if you say you want to wire up a you know, turn on my device or turn on some feature in my device, and that's your method name, you can wire up a method name here and then a payload, and then that gets uh, sent down to your device and uh, and will re respond to that method call uh, by using the method, the direct method uh, way of communicating with devices here. So it's a little bit different than messaging. Messaging is more generic, while this is more, uh, gives you the ability to more tightly integrate with your, uh, your apps that you have running on your devices. So back on the... Um, the hub, it's going to look like, pull that up again. Now, you also have something called Query Explorer. And if you have, you know, literally thousands of devices, this gives you the way to filter devices and do querying like in a SQL-like uh, language there. And there's also some other things related to metrics where you can get uh, monitoring and uh, diagnostics and alerts, depending on other things that are going on. So you can integrate this with other features in Azure, such as, um, and the OMS suite or other things for monitoring and alerts on Azure. So um, a lot of things going on here. Um, there's a lot of things that I'm kind of glossing over, but the the point, uh, the, the real bread and butter of this thing is the ability to manage devices and to also manage the messaging to and from those devices uh, using the, the Azure IoT Hub. So those are the kind of two things, the central things that Azure IoT Hub is designed to use for. And there's a lot of other things that we're going to be talking about through the course of the, this broadcast that center around those two uh, central things that the Azure IoT Hub does. So let's go back to our deck and uh, shift gears a little bit. And I want to talk about devices in particular. So uh, as with most devices, you have something called the, uh, you know, the device twin, which is what you use to send down uh, properties. But devices can become in all shapes, shapes and sizes. They can go from anything from airplanes to smoke detectors. Now, they're uh, interesting uh, to note here is there's a number of SDKs available from Microsoft to build uh, apps on your devices to communicate with Azure IoT Hub. Um, now, the idea behind all these SDKs is to enable developers to have the tools they they can at their fingertips uh, in order to use whatever language they're comfortable with, whatever language will be supported on their device to uh, uh, interact with Azure IoT devices. Um, and so they're making available these available in C, C Sharp, Node.js, Python, and Java. Now C is obviously going to be one of the choices for uh, more low power devices or more uh, resource constrained devices because uh, it's going to be a lot more low level and C is a real low level language. So they have an SDK for that. The other ones are more high level like C Sharp, Node.js, Python, and Java. Um, so if you're running something like a Raspberry Pi, which I have pictured there, you can do more more uh, high level languages that like what you could do with you know, Node.js, Python, C Sharp, and Java. My demo is going to be using Node.js, which is uh, you know JavaScript, and on a Raspberry Pi uh, later on. But uh, again, if you like to use those low level things, you can use C. And there's also, because it does support those other, pr other protocols, if, you, if your uh, device can't do uh, any of these languages, you can still write uh, directly to Azure IoT using generic uh, libraries like an MQTT library or a, an HTTP uh, library that allows you to make HTTP calls or HTTPS calls. So even if if your device doesn't support any of these languages or it's proprietary tech, you can still use Azure IoT Hub. These just provide you a nice uh, abstraction away from all the, the idiosyncrasies or whatever that uh, protocol may be. So uh, the ability to use these uh, does it, uh, help you get um, your device up and running and communicating with Azure IoT a lot more quickly than what it would take if you had to do all that plumbing through a given protocol more manually. But it can be done. It's not impossible. Uh, and uh, But I would highly recommend it if you do uh, uh, go down the route of using um, a device is to select one that is supported uh, and use one of these uh, SDKs that are available from Microsoft for doing Azure IoT. Um, also, devices uh, can use, like I mentioned, uh, can use standard protocols. Uh, they can also um, um, use 
other things like which we'll talk about when we talk about Azure IoT Edge, we can talk about how other protocols can play into uh, um, using device messaging in, in a way that's not going to be communicating directly with Azure IoT Hub. And there's something called Azure IoT Edge, and we're going to talk about how you can use that as a way as a way of mitigating um, direct communication with Azure IoT Hub in a moment. And um, the the way the other way to think about messaging on a device is a direct device to cloud or D to C and then cloud to device, which is C to D. And obviously the direction, you know, device to cloud is coming from the device and sending to the cloud and cloud to device be coming from, the, you know, Azure back down to the device. Um, now I do, I want to do a demo here. That's kind of an end to end demo using um, uh, Azure an Azure IoT device communicating with Azure IoT hub. Um, I, again, I mentioned, um, I am using a Raspberry Pi with Node.js. This is the architecture that I uh, have on this. What I have it doing is it's a device that's uh, sitting here next to me. And if all goes well, everything should work just fine. Um, and it's communicating directly through IoT Hub. And it's using uh, the, the APIs that are available through I IoT Hub. It's using the, the messaging API and it's using the uh, file API that are supplied by the Azure IoT Hub. And so what it does is it's essentially motion capture uh, it's used looking for uh, motion on the device and if it sees something it'll send a, a snapshot up to uh, Azure IoT Hub and then that will be stored into blob storage and then once it sends uh, so many message uh, files it sends a message to the Azure IoT Hub telling it to uh, launch a, um, a message to service bus which then gets picked up by f the function app and then what the function app does is then it goes and downloads those images and embeds them in an email then sends that to me via email so that's kind of the process i'm going to be demonstrating here so this is the the studio that i'm going to be doing i'm going to this is my demo setup my my daughter lent, lent me some toys uh, to do this uh, demo here. And so I'm going to be basically using my motion detector to detect a bear sneaking up on my daughter's uh, princess castle here. And then I'm going to alert the police and send dispatch those police to stop the bear. So you can use Azure IoT Hub to stop bears uh, uh, attacking princess castles. So this is my, de my device setup. You can see there in the foreground, I have my uh, a Raspberry Pi uh, wired up and it's got the power connected, the camera, camera connected and it's got a, a ethernet cable plugged in and uh, it's it's just monitoring my daughter's castle which at the moment doesn't have any bears in front of it so let's flip back over and turn uh, turn this guy on so um let's, let me uh pull up a command prompt here i'm gonna con i'm connected to it right here through a connected to that azure i uh, that Raspberry Pi through a um, SSH session. Now, in reality, you wouldn't use SSH necessarily to start your device. You just plug it in and everything would work. But I, I want to show you the telemetry that uh, that's respond, how the device is actually responding to uh, messages here. So let me um, increase the font size here. Let's see if I can get a little bit bigger. Um, I can't remember how to do that in... in I hope it's big enough. Maybe it's, um, well, I hope that's uh, large enough for you to read. But uh, if you see here, I have a little Node.js script, and that Node.js script is uh, do IoT.js. So this is just a Node app. So I'm going to start that up. Um, and that's going to start by start my app running. Now, currently, it's just connecting to the Azure IoT Hub, and uh, it's just registering itself like, hey, I'm here, and uh, the client is connected. So what I'm going to do now is flip back over to IoT Hub and send a message back down to this device. So here I have my IoT dev uh, devices here, and I'm going to pull up my Raspberry Pi, and I'm going to do a message. Now this is just a simple message. I'm going to say on, and that's going to turn on the camera on the device. And so that message got sent according to this. And let's go back over to my device and see if it is. So motion detection is on. Let me check the hardware. It looks like everything is good on the hardware end. So my bear is going to sneak up on my daughter's castle and uh, let's see if this thing will register. Uh oh, I uh, threw an error here. Let me, um, 
let me restart this and uh, maybe um, restart and uh, let's try again. <laughs> so let me do a I have an error in there. That didn't happen when I ran this this morning. So as always, yeah, come prepared. Starting the daemon. Let's let it connect to the client. Make sure everything's up and running. Let me resend that message down from IoT Hub. Oh, it's sending a message now. Turn the camera on. And there it is. Now let's let the bear sneak up on the castle. Now you can see here that it's uploading a bunch of files. Now that's, um, and there goes a message with all those files embedded in it. So what it's doing is it's it's uh, uploading files and after it gets done uploading a bunch of files, it sends a message. So in a few seconds here, it should start buzzing. Uh, my phone should start buzzing and my email should start buzzing because uh, I uh, got a bunch of files that were uploaded. So it detected that, uh, that the bear snuck upon my daughter's castle. So let me, um, show you what these mess these files look like um i have azure storage explorer uh, pulled up right here and um and i got it connected to that storage account so here are several of the the files it's sending just to show you what these look like um there's the bear sneaking up on my daughter's castle so there's the bear and he got the motion detected and uh you can see there he's uh, sneaking up on my daughter's castle so um now it does take a second for these to come through the messages to go through SendGrid and then end up in my email inbox because uh, there seems to be a little bit of lag between on 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 uh, exchange or on um, outlook um, between refreshes on my uh, inbox so i'm just showing you that there is a bear that snuck up on the castle now if i pull up one of the earlier messages um see if it shows a difference there he's more to the left of the screen and then if i go through um, he's more into the center of the screen and that's the bear sneaking up on my castle. Um, so, and if all goes well, I should get a message here in a minute from, um, from SendGrid that's showing me that the messages have come through. Now it does take, like I said, it does take a minute for some of these to come through. So let's, uh, wait for that to happen. Um, back on Azure IoT hub though, what I can do is I can, um, uh, turn off the camera just to show you that how that works so if I do that and uh, pull back up the the device and you can see here that it has um, motion detection is off now and if I come back over here and make sure the looks like everything got turned back off and if I turn that back on there's the messages that just came into my phone now let's see if I can get these to come through on um, uh, outlook here and uh, got a filter so they go through this and there they are there's all the messages that just sent me three messages so here they are and here you can see the bear sneaking up on my daughter's castle um, and as I push those through you can see there are the messages um, now and now that I got the message um, I can dispatch the the police and uh, turn and uh, send that back on maybe a See if it turned the uh, device back on. It sure did. Now I'm going to send the police. And there's the police. And the police should show up to uh, deal with the bear uh, here in a second. So let me go back over to my device to see if we're sending. Um, there, I have several more messages coming through now, uploading, because it found the police officer to come deal with the bear. So um, if I pull up some of these later images, let's refresh this. Now, now I have 89 images that it took and there's the police officer dealing with the bear at my daughter's castle. So, um, with that in mind, let me, uh, we can wait for that message uh, to come through. Um, and then in the meantime, I'm going to turn off my, uh, device and just turn it off to make sure that's still working. So I'm turning it off and on by way of a, a cloud message going back down to the device and motion detection is off. So if I remove the, remove the bear if I remove the uh, the the police officer then it uh, will then auto and won't detect uh, any mess uh, any differences and the motion detection is off and so I'm not dealing with that at this point so kind of a cheeky little demo there to show you what's going on but it, this does illustrate uh, kind of an end-to-end -end what that might look like if you're using 
this in a security situation, such as um, um, oh, you know, having somebody sneak up on your house or what have you. It looks like I just got those messages from. Um, it looks like I just got the messages from the event hub uh, where the police officer stepped into the frame and uh, there's the police officer stepping into the frame to deal with the bear. So let's go back to the deck and uh, talk about some of the other things that are available on Azure IoT Hub, um, a connected Azure, Azure IoT Hub, and that is uh, IoT Edge. Now, we've, we've looked at the most simple use case there in the demo uh, with the device and with Azure IoT Hub, which was a device uh, being registered directly with Azure IoT Hub and having that device communicate directly with the, uh, the Azure IoT Hub um, and sending messages from uh, directly from Azure IoT back down the device. However, there is a way to inject in the middle of a uh, Azure, uh, an IoT setup, something called Azure IoT Edge. And what this, this does is it acts like a broker um, or a proxy, if you will, between Azure and your devices on your network. And this gives you a little bit of insulation um, to deal with things like network outages or to deal or the, the ability to filter uh, messages based on certain criteria or be able to respond more quickly to uh, crises that are actually happening on your network. So kind of one of the canonical use cases for this is to think about a temperature uh, gauge that, it, that exists on your network. So say you had a temperature gauge and um, say the, the for some reason that there was a fire in your your, your uh, environment and it kills your internet connection, you have the Azure IoT Hub, but this temp here uh, on the edge trying to connect to Azure, but this temperature is trying to send telemetry to Azure, but there's no internet connection to do that. So what Azure IoT Edge can do is take that that telemetry that's being uh, sent to, Azure, that's trying to be sent to Azure IoT Hub and respond to it in a similar way that Azure would by way of functions or something like that directly on the edge. So it says, I have no internet connection. I can't detect an internet connection. This temperature sensor is telling me that there's something wrong with my environment. So it might, it, rather than go to all that way to Azure to get a command, it just issues a command directly to device, shut down now, and it just dis, it sh uh, shuts down all the devices on a, a given environment as a, as a safety precaution due to a temperature sensor. Um, uh, or something like that. That'd be one of the canonical use cases of something like Azure IoT Edge. Now, there's a lot of other things you can do with Azure IoT Edge. What it the, architecturally, the way this thing works is it has baked into it uh, Docker containers, so it's extensible. So you can use uh, Docker containers to, to to host your app and or your filters or whatever it is that you're wanting to, to respond to on that edge. You can also use Azure, Azure Functions as well on the Azure IoT Edge. And uh, those are essentially containers that are running on the edge, and then it provides all the plumbing that you need to connect back to Azure. It can also queue messages uh, from from uh, the cloud back to devices and vice versa from devices to the cloud in the event that you lose internet connectivity so that you don't have to manage all of that on your uh, your devices. It allows your devices to be a little bit more, uh, more uh, unintelligent, if you will, uh, they can just worry about what they uh, picking up data. They don't have to be smart devices, but let the Azure IoT Edge uh, handle a lot more of those cases where it's got to queue messages or to and from the cloud or respond to events, and it can be more intelligent. And it's also closer to the device, and it can respond more rapidly than something like having to go through the cloud would be. So. Again, like I said, they are count, uh, containers where you can bring your own code. And uh, you can also, uh, AI can be plug, applied here on Azure IT Edge using uh, Azure Functions and uh, Stream Analytics that are built right into the Edge as well. So there's ability to do uh, AI type stuff right there on the Edge. Uh, and the AI that's baked into the Edge can be any, uh, be uh, heuristics based on uh, patterns that it attempts to find in data sets and telemetry that are it's being received from all the devices in an environment. So uh, cor make correlations and respond according to AI rules and so on. You can have models and so on running on that IoT edge. So it does have a rather robust feature set and you can extend that with containers. Um, Let's go. I'm going to go back over to Azure and look at uh, the IoT Edge just to show you what that looks like. And let's go pull back up my IoT Edge right here. Now, back on my IoT Edge, um, 
I have right here the ability to create one of these. Now I can create a new edge uh, since I don't have one. I can add an IoT edge, and it gives me uh, a device. It shows up essentially as a special device on the on the Azure. IoT hub, and that I, it's a special device that's configured in such a way to act as that proxy. So, uh, whenever a device uh, that's registered with the Azure IoT Edge, um, it will get a connection string from that Azure IoT Edge to communicate through the Edge rather than going directly to Azure itself. So, there's some all the plumbing for uh, connecting devices by way of this Azure IoT proxy. Uh, is baked into the SDKs that you're that are that are uh, usable by devices. So if you're using Azure IoT Edge just for pro, uh, uh, at the protocol level, uh, you would have to be your uh, implementation would have to be smart enough to know to go to Edge in that in that case. If you're not using the SDKs, however, the SDKs can figure out: Am I using an Edge or am I going directly to an Azure IoT hub? So that is one of the the, the abilities to one of the cool features that are baked into Azure uh, IoT Hub is the ability to use these Edge devices as well. So let's go on and look at. Um, Device provisioning services is the last thing that we will look at. Now, this is a really cool um, service that Microsoft implemented that gives uh, manufacturers the ability to set up devices uh, without actually knowing the uh, the specifics of a particular device and where it might end up going. So what ends up happening with this is uh, it gives you um, there, there's a, a pre preliminary uh, flow that happens uh, before you ever connect the a device to an Azure IoT hub that happens with the device provisioning service. Now, the way this works is uh, here's a zoomed in model of that architecture. What happens is whenever you a device manufacturer sets up a device, they say, hey, uh, I don't know who what customer is going to buy this device, but I do know that uh, a customer will buy it. And what I want to do is the first time they turn it on, uh, I'm going to prompt them for some information. And then that information then can be used to determine what IoT hub they're going to connect to. So the, the, they build into that a, uh, a device uh, setting at the factory that's going to communicate with the device provisioning service on Azure. And so the Azure IoT uh, device is bought and it's installed and then they go through the configuration then that device contacts the DPS on Azure and then what happens is after that DPS is contacted on Azure it tells it connect to a and uh, one of many Azure IoT hubs that are connected to this device provisioning service so then that device will then get registered with that uh, IoT hub that that's based on whatever uh, information was entered into that device when it was first configured um, as part of that setup process. So now it's registered with that device, uh, that uh, that device is registered with a given IoT hub, and now the device receives data from the IoT hub, such as the URL, the auth, um, the authentication information that might be your keys or your certs or what have you, um, and the endpoints for that, that so it can communicate with that Azure IoT hub or even an IoT edge settings. And then lastly, the device can now connect to that Azure IoT hub and communicate back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, just like it were a device that was manually configured like I did with my Raspberry Pi to communicate with an Azure IoT hub or an Azure IoT edge in that case. So you can see how this DPS uh, service gives you the ability to have uh, uh, an environment that you don't have to manually configure every single device uh, with settings, um, uh, a manual process. Rather, it just requires the customer enter some information about who, who he or she or the organization uh, might be, and, uh, and then the device provisioning service handles the rest based on that kind of information. And then that linkage between the IoT hub is set up, and then everything um, is connected. When it's everything is connected, everything can start communicating back and forth with an IoT hub and a given device. So that's kind of the, the way that works. So if you're a manufacturer of devices, this might be one of those things you might want to look into um, and you uh, want to provision devices that are going to have multiple customers using those devices. So that's the end of the content. Uh, I wanted to see if you guys had any questions available, uh, how to ask any questions. So if you want to pose those questions about Azure IoT Hub device, devices or IoT Edge, 
uh, and um, there's a few things that we can do for you. Uh, today we looked at Azure IoT Hub devices, IoT Gateway or Azure IoT Edge, and uh, let us help. There's a few things that you can do. Um, we can help you with your Azure IoT project, or we can help you skill up on Azure uh, with any number of things. So all those things that I mentioned, uh, blob storage functions, uh, and the SynGrid, and all those other things that uh, are part of the Azure ecosystem that integrate with uh, Azure IoT Edge are going to be usually going to be a part of a given uh, uh, IoT deployment. Now, there's a lot of other things you can do with this. Um, stream analytics being one of those. AI, uh, APIs, storage, uh, Cosmos DB, SQL Server. All of these things connect to uh, things that Azure IoT uh, Hub can connect to as well. So I do want to take some time to answer questions. So please, if you have questions, please post uh, those questions in the the questions box here. Um, if you if you it says I have poor audio here, um, my microphone is turned on and it's very loud. I, according to that, so if you have um, questions, please pose those now. Let me pull. Let me pop this out. Maybe I can get some questions here. Okay. Let's see. We have one question set that's asking, uh, where does the Azure IoT live? Uh, is it uh, is it in the device? The Azure IoT Edge um, exists on your end, uh, your side of uh, the Azure IoT experience. So if it's in it, the Azure IoT Edge, would actually be in your data center or in your uh, environment, wherever that may be. So it's something that you can deploy. Uh, on your side, and it's uh, the pool communicating with Azure uh, over the internet. And so it's going to be the one that's responsible for maintaining that connection. Uh, it's it's it, it is a device. It is a usually something like an appliance, or it can be it can be as anything as a simple as a Raspberry Pi, uh, which you can actually get the you can get Azure IoT you know hub for that. Um, or, sorry, Azure IoT Edge uh, for that and uh, use it. Uh, on their edge uh, in your environment, or it can be something as uh, more robust as a full-blown uh, you know, server with multiple cores and uh, lots of RAM and so on. Uh, lots of things there related to Azure IoT Edge. Um, very, it's a very cool product too, what you can do with it. So, But yes, it does exist on your side, uh, and you, but you need to learn uh, about container technology to really take advantage of, of it and customize it to your liking. So it does have uh, the ability to do that. Any other questions? One question coming in from, what if an Azure IoT, Azure IoT device stops responding or any connectivity issues on Azure IoT in production environment, whether uh, whether there is a, any comps that has a fault tolerance there? Uh, there is, uh, in Azure IoT, um, there is the ability to monitor uh, connectivity with devices. Um, uh, I didn't show it to you, but you, if I go, if I drill down into a device, it will show me if it's connected or not connected. Uh, and I can also set up uh, monitoring in Azure IoT for devices that do get, get disconnected that might be you know, down for a given while. Uh, and um, that uh, I do have the ability to respond to device outages or say you, a device goes down for more than an hour, but it's, uh, doesn't see appear to be a connectivity issue or something like that. You can respond to uh, uh, that based on those queries, and that's the monitoring features that are built into Azure IoT Hub. So yes, you can do that. There's some fault tolerance there um, uh, as well. Now you would also need to plan for um, um, fault tolerance whenever you're setting up your Azure IoT environment as well. So um, the IoT Edge gives you a nice uh, scenario where you can handle a lot of that. Uh, messaging, uh, message queuing to uh, to the cloud or from the cloud to specific devices if the device goes off, offline and so on. Uh, and there's also the ability to um, you know have uh, redundancy in your devices and so on. Like they can like 
you could build into your environment the ability, oh, this device dropped, I could spin up a backup device or something like that. So it gives you a lot of flexibility uh, from that angle for dealing with uh, devices from fault tolerance perspective. So yeah, using a lot of the, taking advantage of a lot of the features uh, like Azure IoT Edge, which is free, it doesn't cost anything, you just have to have the uh, uh, the environment set up to use it. And also uh, we're using some of the monitoring tools available on Azure IoT Edge and, and Azure, Azure IoT Hub to respond to uh, outages based on criteria that you define. Um, another question is, when your device talks to Azure IoT Hub, um, is it like, is it talking to an API? Well, it's, it's, it, it's talking to something like an API. So, um, it's using, um, a messaging, uh, messaging protocol to handle that. So what I mean by that is, uh, typically that's, uh, endpoints, essentially, um, message queues have what they call topics. And what you're doing is you're publishing, uh, messages to those topics. Now that that's your essentially what your API is is that that messaging protocol that you're at, that you have. And when you're publishing to that protocol, it can be any number of protocols that I'll list: HTTP, HTTPS, uh, MQTT. And you define what those endpoints look like, and you define what those payloads that those uh, uh, those protocols are listening for look like. So that's up to you to define, but it provides the plumbing to handle all of that. So the uh, API is really kind of what you want to make it. Now there is the SDKs that have an API that is uh, the abstraction of those raw protocols away from you. So the in, the SDKs provide you an API that you can interface with uh, in your uh, your client side uh, code that uh, gives you the ability to uh, treat though any one of those protocols the same as any other. Uh, of the protocols and it looks the same in your code. I was using MQTT in my demo, but you can use any of those other protocols as well. Um, let's see. Next question is, does a device connect to Azure IoT Hub through the Azure IoT Hub Edge or does the device connect to the uh, Edge? Uh, the device connects to the Edge, which acts more like a proxy and the actual Edge itself will connect to the actual Azure IoT hub the edge uh to the device it doesn't care it looks the same either way it's gonna it's gonna respond in the same way the edge actually provides the same levels of functionality that that the a device direct, talking directly to azure iot hub would expect uh it just the, the connection string looks a little different so the sdks understand that oh i'm talking to edge or i'm no i'm talking to uh hub but uh to from the device's perspective it really responds in the same uh manner as uh, regardless of whether it's Edge or Hub, um, so uh, either one would work. The device, though, is not, if you're using Edge, it's more like a proxy, so it's just connecting to the Azure IoT Hub on behalf of that device rather than allowing that device to go directly to Hub. Uh, thank you for the in-depth discussion. You're, you're welcome. Um, let me uh, see. Are there commands to device, uh, let's see another question. Are there commands to device API driven, say, uh, I can call Azure function and take some uh, action. Yes, that's exactly what I did with my demo. Um, what I did with my demo is um, what you can do with a demo uh, with Azure functions or something like that is you can wire up uh, connectors, uh, essentially bindings and functions or something like you, what you use in logic apps or something like that to communicate with a service bus. Uh, which uh, and then what happens is you can send messages from Azure Functions or other type APIs that have bindings to a service bus that then gets uh, pushed down by way of Azure IoT Hub, which is connected to that service bus back down to your device. And then you can reverse that process, which I did in my demo is I had a device that sent messages back up to Azure IoT Hub that then republish that message to a service bus that I had wired up a function to. And then my function then was listening to messages from Azure IoT, uh, from a service bus, uh, that, that message then would download the, the all the files that, it, that were being published uh, through the file API or essentially the file endpoint in the protocol. And uh, then it was crafting an email with all of those as uh, Im embedded in that email and then sending that to me. And that's what the demo I did um, as well. So whether or not it's a command is not, is not a, it's not a 
command per se. It's a weather. It's how you set up the environment to respond to it. So you can you pretty much whatever you want to make of it. It's not hard to do like that. Literally to wire up a service bus uh, to a um, to an Azure IoT Hub is uh, using you know Wizard inside of Azure IoT Hub where you can just say, hey, use this service bus and it'll publish messages to that service bus and vice versa, uh, get messages from a service bus and send them back down to a client. And you can re reply to it uh, as such um, um, going forward. So it's uh, there's not a, it's not a command per se. Now, it's whatever you want to make of it. So uh, again, it's like what however you interpret that message on your device is really what is going to as what's going to happen. And so in the case where I was sending off and on commands from the IoT hub, uh, was my device was using was interpreting that as turn off the detection motion detection or turn that on and so on so uh, another question usually we see some latency when accessing uh, Azure through gateway however IOT devices is usually continuously will it accept asynchronous data yeah actually everything is asynchronous on Azure IO um, IOT hub um, it, it, it might seem instantaneously if you're going directly through um, uh, continuously going through uh, Azure IoT devices and so on, it's all asynchronous calls. So nothing is synchronous um, going uh, with uh, um, messages going from devices to the cloud and cloud messages going back down to devices. It's all asynchronous. There's nothing that's uh, a wait, uh, nothing like HTTP where you, where you do a request and um, and um, wait for that request to respond with a response. It's like you publish a message and you, you hang up and then you have an, uh, another channel where you're listening for messages. And so you can both send and receive messages, but it's, it's a fully asynchronous process. Everything is asynchronous on Azure IoT Hub. And that's, a, that's, by, that's on purpose. So that allows it to be highly scalable. So it's not a typical web server. It's actually more like a, more like a messaging platform, uh, not a web server that where you're doing requests response type stuff um, like yeah um, thanks for the explanation my pleasure um, so the, the like yeah like going back to the question about an API like device device ID command motion detection yes uh, off yeah you it's basically if you wanted to like uh, the question related to is there an API yes you could have a topic that looks something like device slash device ID device command slash motion detection and you could to publish a message to that, you know, off. And uh, if you have something listening to that, turn it off. Yes, that's exactly what you could do. It's uh, uh, that's the it's basically whatever you make it, but it's how you interpret that message on your device and, and your environment. Basically, all what Azure IoT Hub is providing you is all of the all the plumbing to connect all of that together, the highly scalable plumbing to connect all of that together, and uh, so you don't have to build that out yourself. So it's all the infrastructure related to that. So is there, uh, I, I think that's, uh, see, I think that's my last question, if there, unless any other ones are coming in. Um, a few more coming in here, it looks like. Um, thanks for the explanation. By listening for messages, is a device connected to uh, uh, to a monitoring uh, queue? Essentially, yes, that's, yes, that's what it is. The, the Azure IoT Hub at its, at its core is a messaging flat platform for messages going to and from uh the cloud and so it's using it's just giving you a number of different protocols that you can use uh, for that again i was listening for a message on my little raspberry pi uh um and that was being that it was using under the hood it was using mqtt to subscribe to a, a topic on azure iot hub and so it was essentially just listening for that message to come in on my given device uh, and so I, yeah, it's like essentially a queue or a topic under the hood. Uh, so it's, that's what it's listening for. So if you actually had to build this from scratch, you would essentially be using something like a message bus to send messages to, or met or, uh, MQTT broker send messages to and receive those messages back. But Azure IoT hub is providing you an abstraction for that. And also providing you all the plumbing and the connectors to integrate that with other, uh, services that are available on Azure. As we saw, I was using blob storage and a message bus in mine, and I had to wire none of that up. I just used the, the built in integration into Azure IoT to do that. And plus it also gave me all the, uh, the SDKs to build my app with. So it gave, it was it kind of alleviated all the, the pain points of building out that, man, that infrastructure manually myself. 
So uh, free Azure IoT services can send 8,000 messages da daily. Uh, what there, what's the limited, uh, you had to ask, uh, what's the limited size, the limit on the size? I think it's 5K per message. Um, don't quote me on that. I used to know that, and I should know that. Uh, it's in the docs. It's not a fact I have memorized. It's not big, though. I think if you use the the free or the basic tiers, like 5K, and if you bump up to the uh, the standard tier, I think it goes up to 128K. But if you need something larger than that, that's where the files API, uh, the files messaging, like what I was doing um, uh, with my file uploads would come in. If you need to send larger, uh, kind of the larger chunks of telemetry back, that's where you can use files to send that kind of data back. Um, the messaging that gets sent by way of messaging platforms are usually need to be small and compact so they don't clog up uh, highly scalable messaging platform. So I was using a classic pattern in my um, uh, IoT uh, demo with my Raspberry Pi where I send, uh, the, I'll upload a file to a repository, a file repository or some kind of blob storage, which I did. And then once I get a acknowledge that that's, uh, acknowledgement that that's been uploaded, I then send a message that says, hey, do something with this file. And uh, that's where I sent the message. And then my, my Azure function that received that message actually dealt with the files. And that's where it crafted that email and sent it back to me. So that's, a, that's typically how you would handle a larger message uh, than whatever the, the limitation of the message size would be. So something to think about whenever you start architecting your solutions around Azure uh, IoT Edge. Um, can we combine Azure IoT with Azure ML for building machine learning with uh, the, the building machine learning models with huge uh, data recorded by IoT devices and predict actions? Is there a bridge for that? Yes, actually, you can do that. Um, with Azure ML, uh, there is the ability. So essentially, the way that pattern would work is you would have your 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 ingress would be from your messaging. So whatever you use to get your data into your uh, your data store, which you know maybe that data lakes or stream analytics or so on, uh, event grids and stuff that you can that you can use with Azure ML, depending on whatever uh, aspect of Azure ML you're using. Uh, can we combine that? Yes, you can. The ingress would be from your, your messaging platform into your data store, and then you can like uh, bolt up Azure ML all to that uh, to that data store to analyze that data. You can do it in real time, or you can do it in batches. You can do it uh, as the data set grows, and so on and so forth. All of that is available. There's a hundred ways to do it on Azure. I could go. I could do an entire webinar. On, on how to do ingress into data lakes or into SQL Server, into table storage, and how you can connect Azure ML up to any one of those data stores to analyze that data, predict uh, predict actions, and so on. The, the cool thing about Azure is it gives you all of those tools as a service rather than actually having to build out VMs and set up all that infrastructure up yourself. You just use the connectors that are all baked into the platform. So depending on how you want to do that depends on how you would apply this uh, IoT Hub to your uh, Azure ML environment to give to, to fully flesh that out. Again, that there's a lot more going on there than I than I'm, I'm just I'm speaking at a uh, 40,000 foot view here. But yes, it's all yeah, there's there's plenty of ways to do that on Azure, um, and uh, there's no one way to do that on Azure. There's actually multiple ways depending on. Uh, on your use case. So good question there though. Um, there's a lot of integration points on Azure uh, for data, especially that coming out of Azure IoT, um, given the number of devices and how much telemetry they can, they're sending, you can do uh, predict models and then respond to those uh, accordingly. Uh, you can integrate that with any number of, of the available uh, machine learning uh, tools out there on Azure. Um, uh, any other questions? If that if that's not if there's lots of good questions, thank you for posing those. Um, uh, I do. We will have a recording of this uh, available on our um, our website at winelect.com under Dev Center, where you can. We'll, we recorded the session, so you can go out there if you want to go back and review the session. Uh, we'll so it'll have the the slides, the demo, and so on uh, available, so you can look at that and also all the questions. Uh, available there. So uh, again, thank you for taking the time out to um, uh, sit through the this uh, session on Azure IoT Hub. We're going to hang out. Um, what about the source for the demos? Uh, would that be available? Sure, I can make that available. I, I could put that on GitHub or something like that. It's really nothing super fancy. It's just using Node.js. Um, 
and um, hopefully uh, we'll be uh, we'll, if you need some help with your Azure IT project, please reach out to us at Winelec. We we can help you with that. And if you want to reach out to us to learn more about Azure uh, Azure in general, please reach out to us there. Uh, we have a uh, consulting services, or you can follow me on the One Mule at Twitter. I'm constantly posting stuff about Azure and Azure IoT stuff and uh, other things related to this topic. So uh, again, thank you for your time, and uh, hope to see you on future Intellect webinars.